Hi, my name is Sean. Hi, I'm Bob. And one of the things we love to do at Grace Evangelical Society in our, in our magazine, Grace and Focus, and in our journal, the journal of the Grace Evangelical Society, is just to read the Bible and just find these interesting, wonderful connections in the Bible. And one of those connections uh, is the subject of paradise. Paradise. Uh, we're coming to the end of summer here in Texas, and I, I kind of feel like the rich man on the kind of like the, the, hot, the hot side of, of Sheol, looking at paradise, looking forward to it. What is paradise in the Bible? And it, it looks like there's at least four different places that are called paradise in the Bible. Isn't that right? Right. One of them would be in Genesis, like 2.8, Genesis 2.10, when it talks about the Garden of Eden. In Greek, the word garden is the word paradise. And so it's the paradise of God. And Genesis 3.8 says that God used to walk with Adam and Eve in the garden in the cool of the day. I take it that's the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ walking with them in paradise. Paradise was Eden. And so the interesting thing is we all know what happened in the garden. Uh, there's the fall and Adam and Eve are, are kicked out of the garden. And then what happens to paradise then? Well... It's the next use we have of paradise is found with Jesus on the cross. You remember when he's talking to the thief on the cross? And he says, today you will be with me in paradise. And where Jesus went after he died was not the third heaven. He went to Sheol or Hades. And he was there until Sunday morning when he rose from the dead. And so... While Jesus was there, Sheol, or Hades, was paradise. Now, Sheol had, had two parts, right? There's the kind of the hot part that you didn't want to be in. And then there's kind of like the cool air-conditioned part that's sometimes known as Abraham's bosom. And that seems to be where Jesus went, isn't it? Exactly. That's Luke 16, 19 through 31. That's the rich man and Lazarus that you alluded to earlier. And the good part, the part where Abraham was, the part that was cool that part we would think of as paradise, and that's where Jesus went. The next use after that is, remember where Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 4, that he knows a man who was caught up into the third heaven, into the very paradise of God? Well, Paul was talking about himself, and God gave him a vision of the third heaven. And so at that point, because Jesus had now ascended from earth to heaven, he'd left Sheol, and so had all of the uh, uh, saved dead, all of the regenerate dead had gone with him. And so now, uh, at this time, paradise is the third heaven. Mm -hmm. but, but there is a fourth use. And the, very f the fourth and last use is in the book of Revelations. Right. Uh, and that is kind of gives us a picture. Jesus has come back, and there is the, the, the millennial kingdom, and the new heavens and the new earth. And the tree of life is there. Right. And the tree of life is planted in the paradise of God. That, that's exactly what Revelation 2.7 says. That the tree of life is in the paradise of God. So paradise in the eternal state is not going to be the third heaven. It's going to be the new earth. And so what we see in scripture is paradise shifts related to where Jesus is. Or maybe in some cases, like for example, Sheol, before Jesus uh, went to Sheol, it may have been called paradise, we're not told. But in any case, Sheol uh, could have been for a time paradise, part of it at least. The Garden of Eden was paradise, the third heaven right now is paradise, and the new earth is going to be paradise. Um, you may have spent your whole life dreaming about paradise, dreaming about getting to paradise, well, if you want to go to the actual paradise of God, if you want to go to where Jesus is after you die, you need to believe in him for everlasting life. And we would invite you to do that now. Jesus promised that whoever believes in him, there's just one condition, whoever believes in him for everlasting life, those people have it in the moment that they believe in him for it. So that when you die, you'll be with him in paradise forever. And if, and if that seems too easy to you, our suggestion is, why not pray about it? Say, God, could it really be that easy? And then we encourage you to read the Gospel of John and see what Jesus says about who has everlasting life. 
because God will show you if you pray and seek.